If you enjoy what you're hearing and find it valuable, like, comment, and share. It's Ultra Life Today, and we're talking about brain health, and we're demystifying some things, uh, busting some myths related to cognitive decline, dementia, Alzheimer's. Uh, a friend of Ultra Botanica, you've probably seen him before. He coaches hundreds, if not thousands, of people annually on their journeys with cancer, and also has studied for a couple of decades because within his own family, there's been cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, dementia issues. And so, uh, once again, Keith, welcome back to Ultra Life Today. Well, thank you. Um, I've got a question for you, Keith. Um, uh, no nos. Um, you know, what are the absolutely don't do this, or these are the best things that you could do to begin to change some things with your brain and cognitive decline? What are your top five no nos or the pop, top five things that people do to harm brain function? Number one, probably sweets. So too many sweets damage the blood vessels. So that glucose, uh, it actually damages the inside of the blood vessels. And day in and day out, year after year, it causes atherosclerosis. That's where the blood vessels just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The brain cells have to have nutrients just like the rest of the body. So, and that's what the glucose is literally doing. Uh, another term for Alzheimer's is diabetes type three. And so even a, even a pre-diabetes issue for 20 or 30 years I may definitely create a problem. Okay, if so you it, add on a few other things, you, it's going to be a major issue. Okay, number two. Number two is probably not enough activity. And exercise. Exercise, walking. walking. I have a standing desk, and I'm standing. The only time I ever sit down besides this, you know, is going to be for an appointment, you know, at my desk. Otherwise, I'm standing. Um, I'm active. I'm, 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 you know, chopping at trees, riding the horse or yep. whatever. You know, we have to be physically active. And when they study the blue zones, that's what they're noticing. These people, it's part of what they eat, definitely. But part of it is they're walking everywhere. You know, they don't get in the car and drive and like we do, especially here in Oklahoma. And yeah. in the Western world. I mean, again, yes. I was recently out on the East Coast and delighted to see some people walking. But, you know, I've been to Europe a few times recently. Wow. I mean, I understand why there's a big difference yes. in health and, and cognitive right. decline in some of these countries because – I don't even know if most of these people own a car. They could. Many mm -hmm. of them have the ability to purchase one. Why? They walk several miles a day. Exactly. To work, walk to eat lunch. To get to their dinner, food everything. and just walk down to yeah, the corner. To the market. And they have this smaller you know, community. Yeah. And you know, the way many areas are set up, especially once again here in Oklahoma and many western states, we're so far apart. Yep, that's true. You know, it for me to get to a grocery store from where I live, it's a twenty minute drive, you know, to get there. Okay. Sugars, exercise, mm -hmm. what's number three? Uh, number three would be um not paying attention to blood pressure. And so as your well, blood This is new to me. Yeah. Okay. So blood pressure as blood pressure increases, that's a sign of poor circulation. Okay. That's that atherosclerosis plaque buildup. Yep. And instead of well, taking a medication, you're treating the symptom, but you're not taking care of the problem. You're still getting this plaque buildup. So, you know, you can do a heart scan. Yes, that's great. But, you know, it, there's plaque elsewhere. So if a person has high blood pressure, that is a major factor. So they're, they're not taking care of themselves. You know, and then another major issue is, is a combination. It has to do part with number one, but the, the excess carbohydrates and sugars. But you have to have enough protein also without going overboard. And so neurotransmitters come from amino acids, vitamins, and minerals. Right. So we have to have that combination of things you know, for that. So, so that's very important. Sunshine exposure, you know, and that's part of the vitamin D and Absolutely. circulation. Uh, I'll put along with that even stress, you know, with that, because I guess I'm thinking of my life. You know, I'm working all the time right. inside usually, except for the weekend when I'm playing weekend warrior. And um, and I'm not getting my sunshine exposure and I'm not just sitting back and relaxing. And, and so uh, stress is probably number four, you know, along that line. Stress uh elevated stress chemicals stimulate the brain 
and can kind of burn it out. And yeah, you know, as, as I've gotten older, I've become more consciously aware of me holding on to anxieties or, you know, being concerned about what's coming next, kind of borrowing trouble from the future, as the old f- uh, phrase goes. But I have found that I was able to retrain my brain to catch myself when I'm in those places. Oftentimes I find as well that when I'm doing that, I'm breathing real shallow. Mm -hmm. I'm doing costal breathing. And so I'll stop and I'll take a deep breath, maybe walk away from the screen or Mm -hmm. the phone just for a couple of minutes and just maybe walk down the hall and back, you know, walk around the house or something and come back. And it's a beautiful way to reset. I mean, there's some really simple things we can do as we become aware of things like anxiety, you know, that I think can really change it up and add years to your life. And thanks for reminding me about breathing. Yeah. (laughs) Remember, I have a handout I give. To all my clients, if I have any concerns about that, is I call it therapeutic breathing, right. intentional breathing. You have yep. to concentrate at you it. Do. Right now we're talking, so we're just doing very shallow breaths, right. just quick to get the, the words out and not that deep, relaxing breath. That's part of the meditation. And I that's part of my nightly routine. So number five would be sleep. Okay. You know, probably. And we'll so get into that you know, more you know, later. I mean yeah. in, a, in a in an expanded Exactly. Way, and so and you know, with that you know, and it still has to do, I have to do meditation, breathing to help me with that. And matter of fact, that's something I learned in psych 101 in college, you know, was about kind of like self meditation and relaxation about it kind of going through different muscles and relaxing. They didn't really do the breathing part, but there's contrary on muscles. And, and so uh, by doing that, but definite intentional breathing and counting that takes away the stresses. And stresses create anxiety, cortisol, cortisol is damaging, right. and, and other, other neurostimulators. So, so that m- meditation is extremely important. It doesn't mean you have to sit there for 20 minutes a day, not at all, right. just a, a few minutes. I do it while I'm driving to work. I don't mm-hmm. close my eyes, but I'm- I understand. You know, <laughs> but I'm, don't but I'm, do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> so, but I'm, I am you know, concentrating on the breathing. So I do a little Bible study, and then breathing, and- it lowers my blood pressure. No question. And it's amazing. Yeah, I, I have coupled this new idea of the way I deal with stress with my time of being aware of the Lord's presence and also then, pra- I call it prayerful meditation. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. I, I think good thoughts, I think God thoughts, mm-hmm. you know, I think scriptures, things like that. And it helps so very much. Now, I've recently discovered a really cool resource, Keith, but I want you to address this and maybe reinforce what I recently discovered. I was actually relatively unaware that there's a variety of different testing tools available to individuals. My question to you is, what's a good way to measure a person's current brain status? Because a lot of people that are watching us right now, they've got no clue where they're at, and they may be scared after listening to a little bit of what we've talked right. about. Mm-hmm. You know, I want them to know that there's a there's a happy path, and there's hope for this, right. and you can turn things around. But what are some tools that you might use? And then I'm going to mention a particular website that I discovered that I think is really fascinating. There's yeah, there's definitely some, uh, all, several websites and information available. Uh, kind of a classic evaluation that can be done uh, you can download it um, it's there might even be online uh, ways to do this right. but it's a, a a minty mental a mini excuse me mini m-i-n-i mental state exam or evaluation mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's going to ask questions about you know who's the president what's today's date and things like that and then drawing a diagram or maybe copying a diagram which is geometric a little bit of a challenge, or I, in my office even, I just draw a clock. And so there's some memory, there's spatial, uh, follow through the executive function, mm-hmm. several things involved in drawing that clock. And with that, you can even put a number, like how many, how many times did they ask for help? You know, did they get all those questions right? But how many times did they ask for help for drawing that, that clock? at a specific time did they get the minute hand the hour hand you know in place the numbers in place did they put the numbers on inside outside the dial things like that uh, it's very valuable because it's something that's easy to repeat and can be pretty quick the uh, a lot of times doctor's offices will do the senior citizen evaluation and, and ask a few of those questions it can give a little bit of an insight but uh, i really like that 
that clock type thing. There are also some some computers. I don't think see your computer or not, but there are some computer evaluations too, where you know they will literally you know have motions and things going on, and you're tr- you're clicking and tracking, and it's keeping track of that and timing it. Interesting. And so there are some evaluations you know for that too. One of the tips that this guy and the guy's name is Patrick Holford. I, I know you'll go looking him up because I was so fascinated with some of his research. But uh, one of the things he mentioned, though, that was so critical, he says, if you're going to do a brain test, an online brain test, turn off your phone, shut the doors, focus. You need to, and some of these take up to 30 minutes to Mm do. He says, you need to get all outside influences out. You need to focus. And he said, above all, you need to be brutally truthful. Don't hedge on these kinds of tests Mm -hmm. because what you're doing is you're measuring where you were really at and your potential for cognitive decline or where you may be at in that process. So I'm going to bring up the the website that I discovered. It's called foodforthebrain.org, and I believe four is spelled F-O-R in that. So foodforthebrain.org. But they do something really cool, Keith, that I thought was great. He's had 480,000 people take his test, almost a half million Mm -hmm. worldwide. And what they're doing, they not only have some cool tips, you know, to help you with your roadmap and change habits and things, but they're actually doing this anonymously so that he's got this big kind of open label clinical research study going Mm -hmm. on to determine as people apply these particular things related to diet and supplementation and exercise, how rapidly within a particular age group are they beginning to see changes and improvements? I just think it's a really cool idea. Yes, yeah, so I'm glad so many people have bought into it. it. Definitely, that's great. You know, another one of my favorites is uh, Dale Bredesen. Oh yeah, I've and heard the Bredesen of him. Protocol, okay. um, the the end to Alzheimer's or Alzheimer's, and uh, he's been keeping some statistics. And also, and matter of fact, you know, when he sees people, so long as they have that partner to help them, mm-hmm. you know, and they follow the food, the exercise, the supplements, the and, and maybe some prescription type things to treat certain issues, they expect to see improvements. And same thing with myself. I, I expect to see with my clients improvements, you know, in their memory. Now, you might challenge this because of your family history and the genetic components mm-hmm. that you talked about earlier. But it was interesting to me because Patrick Holford made a pretty sweeping statement when I saw this interview that he was doing. And he said his belief was that 99 out of 100 people, that 1% is what he said may have some heavy-duty genetics associated with it. Mm -hmm. But I was so hopeful when I heard him say he believes that 99 out of 100 people can follow the appropriate steps with exercise, supplementation, diet. and actually have a healthy brain into old age. Definitely. That's so good to hear. Yeah, you definitely. Say that. So, I, matter of fact, I have clients that have two markers. Uh, it's called APOE4, and they got one from each parent, and they're doing great. They're Amazing. way into their late 60s Outstanding. and thriving. And then I have others that don't have the Alzheimer's marker that what we think of that as the primary one that we can test for. And they're not doing good because they're not exercising, eating right, taking care of themselves. I think with your top five, you've already kind of answered my next question about the super ager brain and the secrets to that. But another question I would have is you hear of these things, brain tangles, and yet an, an individual is not exhibiting signs of brain dysfunction or dementia. Tell me what's going on there. Do we, do, do we know? Yeah, well, we're, we're learning that. And so it's the same thing like we know about the beta amyloid plaque you know that's inside the brain the new drugs that came out for that investigational drugs that dissolve that beta amyloid plaque and the tau it didn't impact things things got worse right okay well, so I, and i happen yeah. to know some of the drugs that got approved a number of years ago that they touted as being the very best people started using them and the tests are showing that cognitive decline was happening in a greater capacity yeah, with and, some of those drugs. So they were saying, "This is this is the next right, greatest exactly, greatest thing yeah. for so, preventing Alzheimer's." So, not, so there's still a lot to learn about that, and so you know, time's going to tell. But the brain has this ability to kind of shift, you know, some of those memories and abilities to other parts of the brain. So there's a lot to learn still about it. 
Yeah. Well, this is Ultra Life Today, and we're talking with Keith Bishop, clinical nutritionist, retired pharmacist, incredible health coach. You can reach out to him. One website is prevailovercancer.com, spelled just like it sounds. The other website uh, currently is flourishrx.com. That's F-L-O-U-R-I-S-H-R-X.com. Ultra Life Today.